we're taking you on a tour of one of Asia's most dynamic cities, Hong Kong. Yes, this is a city of modern skyscrapers and futuristic architecture, but if you scratch beneath the surface and spend a little time here, you'll discover pockets of tranquility in the form of incense-filled temples and bonsai gardens, a delicious foodie scene that features budget-friendly Michelin-starred restaurants, mountainous islands that are an easy day trip away, antique markets full of treasure, and a dazzling skyline you won't soon forget. Without further ado, let us show you 25 things to do in Hong Kong. Let's kick things off at the Peak Tram, where the steep 7-minute ride to Victoria Peak gives you some of the best views of the city. So we just finished riding the tram to Victoria Peak, and now we're enjoying the free views. We could be paying more and going up to the Sky Terrace, but we refuse because the free views are good enough. <laughs> yeah, and if you're willing to walk out a little bit from the complex, you'll find that, you know, the crowds slowly dissipate. dissipate. Yeah. And then, hey, we're just by ourselves right now. At 552 meters, the peak is the highest mountain on Hong Kong Island, and its location offers vast views of towering skyscrapers, Victoria Harbor, and Kowloon off in the distance. For more postcard-worthy views of Hong Kong, we also visited Victoria Harbor at sunset and then watched as the skies turned from amber to fiery orange. Another event you should definitely make time for is the Symphony of Lights, which is a daily music and light show that encompasses both sides of the harbour. Skyscrapers dazzle with blinking lights and laser beams while everyone oohs and ahs from the waterfront. You can watch the show from either Kowloon or Hong Kong Island, but I personally prefer being on Kowloon since Hong Kong Island has the iconic skyline. We are currently in the Nan Lian Garden, which is right across from the Chilin Nunnery. And again, like most parks here in Hong Kong, it's super peaceful. They have soft music playing. You can hear the birds chirping. It's beautiful flowers. There's like a little golden pagoda in the middle of a lake. So we're going to show you all that now. After visiting the gardens, we crossed over to the Chilin Nunnery, which is a Buddhist temple complex that dates back to the 1930s. What is perhaps most impressive is that the structures were built out of wood, but without the use of a single nail. Alright guys, we have three words for you. Tim Ho Won. Tell us all about it. What is this place? This is basically one of the best places to try dim sum in all of Hong Kong. It's a yeah. Michelin star restaurant, yet yeah. it's affordable. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna order a lot of food, and we're just gonna scarf down dim sum. Okay. Oh, look Ready? Yeah. Alright guys, so we just finished placing our order and this is what the menu looks like. You basically grab a pencil and you take off the different dishes you're interested in. The first one has already arrived. Oh wow. So we got a little bit greedy because it's like 3 in the afternoon, we haven't had lunch yet, <laughs> so we ordered 7 different dishes and we're going to be showing you those once they arrive. First one's here and this one is the sticky rice wrapped in a lotus leaf. This is one of our favorites. Yeah, this is so good. So let's not waste any time. Let's just start unfolding this masterpiece. Lots wow. of steam rising. Ooh, look, look at that. that. It's a huge leaf. It's a huge one. And there you've got the, the sticky rice with chicken, I believe, and a nice mushroom. So we're going to be sharing this. Wow. Well, so what do you think? I love it. He loves it. And there's more food. Oh my god. <laughs> so I'm just going to use my hand because it's a little bit easier for me. But man, these are nice and plump. Yeah. Everything here is plump <laughs> and stuffed. I know, they, they do not skimp out here. Mm. Mm. What do you think? Very hot. It's a barbecue. This is so fluffy. Oh my gosh. I know. It's a lot fluffier than I remembered. Wow. What about the taste? Do you like it? 
It's really nice because it's like savory inside, but then really sweet on the exterior, so you get both flavors. That's what together. it is. It's, it's that contrast that makes it so good. Mm. So the next on the menu is one of our absolute favorites. I believe it's called hargal, and that is basically the. They're almost like shrimp dumplings. They're yeah, they are. Shrimp in a little uh, wrapper, and they're just oh, they're so good. Oh my gosh, this is a slippery one. So, <laughs> <laughs> Don't burn yourself. I have a feeling it's going to be really hot. Those are like freshly steamed. <laughs> oh man. His eyes are bulging out. What could that possibly bite. mean? <laughs> so, yeah, it's just filled with like so much shrimp. Mm -hmm. and you just bite into it. It's juicy. It's just so flavorful and tasty. It's so plump. It is. Seriously, look at those. That's the best way to describe them. Just such plump, plump, plump pieces of shrimp. I think it goes without saying that Tim Ho Wan is one of our favorite places for dim sum and it's worth seeking out if you're ever in Hong Kong. So next up we're going to watch the Noonday Gun and I have to admit the first time I heard about this attraction I had no idea what it was. Sam actually mentioned it to me last time we were in Hong Kong like three years ago and I just thought Noonday Gun was a name. To me it sounded like Chinese. But apparently it's a gun that they fire during the day at noon. So we're just waiting for that to happen right now. Getting here is a little tricky. I wish I could give you instructions. Um, basically, you can probably see the Excelsior Hotel behind me. The Excelsior. Um, you need to go down some tiny side alley and then cross through a tunnel. Um, but yeah, it's a little bit tricky to find it. We went into like three buildings before we found the right place So you may have to ask around to find it um, But yeah, we're here. We're gonna watch this gun be fired Well, Sam, after all these years, you finally got to see the Noonday Gun again. How was it? Yeah, it must have been like six or seven years ago that I got to experience this. Well, my biggest tip for this is when you come here, make sure you plug your ears just before it shops. Yes. It, it is some kind of loud. And it also, it almost makes you like shake. It's, like that's how loud It's it really powerful. Yeah, yeah it's, it's scary. It's a powerful blast. And it's a very short ceremony. Like he just rings the bell, fires the gun, off he goes, and then you can come in and check this place out. Yeah, for nice. 30 we'll minutes and, and take some, some pictures of the gun and just walk around. It's yeah. Cool. Another fun thing to do in Hong Kong is to ride the double-decker trams. This was one of the earliest forms of transportation in the city and riding them through the modern financial district feels a bit nostalgic. If you're really looking for something memorable, you can actually hire a party tramway and celebrate with music, drink and stellar views as you cruise through the city. We are currently making our way down Upper Alaska Row and this is the place to buy souvenirs. There's also some construction happening so it's a bit loud. But basically the street is lined with shops that sell really high-end antiques. And then on the street you have like these little tables with like old trinkets and just things that would make really cool souvenirs but also have a history behind them. So it's worth checking out for sure. I haven't picked up anything, but I do see things that interest me. It's just I don't have a home and I don't have room in my suitcase. If antiques aren't really your thing and you're looking for something a bit more modern, Causeway Bay is full of malls, department stores and fashion boutiques. So today we are going in search of free views of Hong Kong. Always like free stuff. So we're here at Central Plaza and apparently on the 46th floor there's a sky deck. So we're going to be checking this out for the first time. We've never done this in Hong Kong before. Let's do it! So 
So look at this, we get 360 degree views of Hong Kong from this building and no one's here! And it's free! More people should know about this place, seriously guys! Free views of Hong Kong, all to yourself! This is a bit of a quirky attraction to be listing, but not every city offers the opportunity to ride a series of escalators instead of walking up hills. The Central Mid-Levels Escalator is the longest covered escalator system in the world, so it's worth experiencing at least once. Just know that there is no escalator going down, so you'll have to take the stairs. Manuel Temple dates back to 1847 and is dedicated to the god of literature and the god of war. For a little trivia, this temple was once popular with students looking to succeed in the civil examinations of Imperial China. We're currently inside the Man Mo Temple, and it is thick with incense in the air. I don't know if you can actually see it, but it almost burns your eyes a little bit, yet it looks magical at the same time. weekend in Hong Kong. Tell us, what are we up to? Yeah, it's time for some nightlife in Hong Kong. We're at Lan Kwai Fung, and this is probably the most popular nightlife area in the city. We're not exactly going to paint the town red, but I think we'll get a <laughs> beer or maybe a glass of wine. rather be at home, in bed, or reading a book on a Sunday night, but apparently that's considered lame. So somebody insisted we check out the nightlife. That's all kinds of nerdy, so. <laughs> all kinds of nerdy? <laughs> so here we are. The funny thing is, it's like 7.30 p.m. right now. We're super early. Yeah. It's gonna get off and around 9 or 10. <laughs> <laughs> by which time, we'll be back. We'll be sleeping Back by in then. the hotel. But anyways, cheers, what did you get? Uh, I got red wine. And, and I got, got gin and tonic, salut! If you're looking to get out of the city and a little closer to nature, you can ride the aerial tramway to Lanto Island. Once you're there, you can visit the Poland Monastery and also visit the Tian Tian Buddha, better known as the Big Buddha. So one thing to keep in mind is that if you visit the Buddha in the morning, it is backlit. So if you're a photographer and you want to be able to take some good shots from the front, you may have better luck in the afternoon. Otherwise, this is what you'll get. Time for a little update. Yeah, so we've had a busy day exploring Hong Kong. Now it's time to go back to our apartment. And this is our favorite way of getting around the city. It's taking the Star Ferry. Star Ferry. In my opinion, it's like, it's iconic transportation in Hong Kong. You've got to do it. It's cheap, it's fun. You can cross Kowloon to Hong Kong Island or vice versa. And it's just something we can look forward to doing every time we visit Hong Kong. And the view. museums are your thing, you can always pop into the Hong Kong Museum of History in Simsa Shui, which looks at Hong Kong's history and cultural heritage. The permanent exhibition is free of charge. Right now we are visiting Hong Kong Park and this is one of the coolest parks in the city because you are surrounded by skyscrapers yet you can hear the sounds of nature. They have streams and waterfalls and you can hear the birds chirping and there's palm tree swaying so it feels very peaceful but you can still see that Hong Kong is a very modern city and it's not that far away. Inside the park, they also have this huge walkthrough aviary. Um, and yeah, they just have birds flying freely. One just nearly hit someone in the head. It's pretty cool. They have over 600 birds in here. 
Another cool park you can visit is Kowloon Park, which offers a serene escape on the other side of the harbor. For a bit of a splurge and some sugary treats, we would recommend indulging in afternoon tea. We went to Lion Rock inside the Royal Plaza Hotel. Yes. All right, so I'm so excited the tea is here and we each got our own pot and seriously, there's probably like three cups. Three cups <laughs> in here and they've already poured And one. yours is what, the chocolate truffle? It's the chocolate mint truffle. I don't even know oh my God. the order, but it that, smells amazing. That it seems it like a bit like of a fancy pants tea. Yeah, it smells like melted chocolate with mint. Does it? I can't say I smell the truffle, but I'm not that familiar with truffle, so... That's nice. Like the flavor itself isn't very strong, but it's more the aroma that you get before you drink it. And like you don't need any sugar or milk with this. It's just so good. I love the way it smells. It smells like the holidays. <laughs> we are both so giddy right now. The Tower of Heavenly Delights has arrived. Lo and behold. So let's see, what can we choose? So we're gonna start from the top and work our way down. So we have some scones, some chips with crab meat, I think. This looks like a mini quiche. And then we have mini burgers, mini sliders. What's I on the, what's have on the a second burger. level? Well, we'll get to that later. <laughs> First, let's eat from the top, all right? And I have a major sweet tooth, so I'm starting with the scones. I'm just going for it. Why waste any time? So there we have it. There's a little scone. I'm gonna cut it in half. And I've got some jam here. And I'm really hoping this is clotted cream and not butter. Ugh. But it might be butter. I think it may be butter. Would that be the saddest thing ever? Uh, if it was butter? It's a little sad, but I will survive. <laughs> it's not England, so that's okay. And then some jam. Wow. Oh yeah, baby. This is what I came for. The scones, that's my favorite part of the whole afternoon tea experience. So if you don't want your scone, Sam, I oh, will I'll gladly, want my scone. I'll gladly relieve you. No worry about that. This is like one bite. Mm. Oh man. <laughs> that's how it's done. So I think I have something that might be a mushroom tart. It has a very um, flaky exterior and it looks like mushrooms on top, so... There we go. There we go. I don't know if I should do it in one bite or two. All in one bite. Oh my gosh, that's a huge one bite. bite. You can handle it, Sam. <laughs> Ooh, keeping things classy. Mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh. We'll give you a second to, to chew and search for your words. <laughs> <laughs> so food doesn't go flying right. everywhere. That would be a civilized way of uh, doing things. <laughs> so, if you've ever had it like a thick mushroom creamy soup before, Ooh. it tastes like that. And then it just, oh, that pastry is so buttery and flaky. And you just bite into it and it just like disintegrates in your mouth. <laughs> and you're rolling that mushroom around. It's just like, oh. <laughs> you're rolling nice. it around, huh? Rolling around on your palate. <laughs> mm. And you get the idea. It was an hour of um num num nums. This evening we're taking part in Sam's favorite activity, shopping. Oh yeah. Shopping. No, we're headed over to Temple Street Night Market and we're just gonna check it out, see what's happening out there. The market itself stretched for several blocks and offered all kinds of clothes, purses, souvenirs, and random knickknacks. We also spotted some street karaoke happening in the area. Lastly, let's talk about transportation. The most effective way to get around Hong Kong is by MTR. If you're going to be here a few days and you don't want to pay for individual tickets each time, you can get an octopus card and also save on the fare. As a final piece of advice, try to avoid traveling in Hong Kong during rush hour. You'll either feel like a canned sardine on the subway or be left behind on the platform like a beached whale because there's no more room. And that's a wrap for Hong Kong. We hope that you enjoyed this travel guide and that it gave you a few ideas of things to do and places to visit on your own trip. 
We know we only covered a small fraction of everything Hong Kong has to offer, so if you have any other suggestions of things travelers should experience, feel free to share those in the comments below. Wishing you happy travels and until next time. Alright guys, so in today's video, we are going to be sharing some travel tips for Hong Kong and also letting you know how expensive is Hong Kong? Yeah, how expensive is Hong Kong? I think we all know the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, it is quite expensive, but there's also some really cool aspects about Hong Kong. Almost unlike any other city we visited, there's like a plethora of free things to do. Mm -hmm. And there's, Budget eats? Yes, budget eats and also transportation is really cheap. But we're going to break everything down and let you know the costs for Hong Kong. Okay, so first up, let's get started with transportation from the airport into Kowloon or Hong Kong Island. Right, and like our last travel tips video, we've got our notes on our computer, so <laughs> you'll see us looking down from time to time, so we just don't want to miss anything. Alright, so the first point we have is arriving by Airport Express, mm -hmm. and that's what we did getting into Hong Kong. It's like this really fast train that takes you right into the city. You can get off at Kowloon or you can go all the way to Hong Kong Island at Central Station. And it's super efficient, really fast, very comfortable. Um, so in terms of the price, so you're looking at 100 Hong Kong dollars all the way to Central and Kowloon, or you're looking at 90 Hong Kong dollars to Kowloon Station. So that's about 11 to 12 US dollars. Something else important to know is that they have free porters to help you bring on your luggage. <laughs> we, we didn't take it. We didn't take advantage of that service. No one helped us with our bags. <laughs> no, but if if you if you do have trouble getting your bags onto the train, there's someone that's apparently available to help you do that. Good to know. <laughs> that's really good to know. Um, an even cheaper option is buses, and there's a bus a bus system called the City Flyer, and this is how we got back to the airport. Yeah, from the remember. city to the airport when we were leaving. Yeah, and prices can range anywhere from 10 Hong Kong dollars to 48. Uh, it's going to be closer to the 48 range if you're leaving anywhere from the, the center of Hong Kong, which is what we did. And that you're looking at like five to six US bucks for that. This is also quite a comfortable way to get to the airport. I remember, I think it was air conditioned inside. I fell asleep, so <laughs> I don't remember much. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they have, they have a little section for you to put your your luggage and uh, yeah, uh, as long as there's not a lot of traffic, then it's a fairly efficient way to get from the airport to the city or vice versa from the city back to the airport. Mm -hmm. So we can also recommend doing that, especially if you want to save a little bit of money. And the last option that we have here is taking a taxi. Oh, man. And that's going to cost you a lot. That's anywhere from 250 to 350 Hong Kong dollars. So you're looking at around 40, maybe to 50 US bucks to get you into the city. And I guess the only time we'd recommend taking that is if you were in maybe like a, a super rush, something like that. But otherwise, why wouldn't you take <laughs> the first two options? <laughs> Save some money, guys. So for accommodations, you have a few different options, but we're gonna tell you right now, it is going to be pricey. This is probably the most expensive city in all of Asia for accommodation. Yeah. And you're not going to get a whole lot of space. If you watched our Hong Kong hotel room tour, there's a shot where Sam is like touching the two walls. It, it yeah. was tiny and like the beds were tiny as well. You, you kind of you kind of feel like a giant when you're in a, when a typical do. Hong Kong uh, hotel do. room. But anyways, your best bet if you're traveling on a budget would be a hostel. So yeah. how much would you say that is? So dorm rooms can be anywhere from about 17 to 30 US dollars. Mm -hmm. And the price, like that price range reflects on where you're staying and also the quality of the hostel. Yeah. So that's about as cheap as it gets. Um, also, you can sometimes get like a really cheap flop, what we call a flop house at that price, which technically it's your own room, but it's almost like, so it's so small, it's almost like a closet. Yeah. So you're not going to get a ton of value at that price range. That's just like the rock bottom price for, for accommodations in Hong Kong. So the next step up would be kind of like a budget or mid-range hotel. And that's what we did yeah. for our, our visit to Hong Kong. Yeah. And well, you, you pay, you tell us the price. Yeah, I think we, we were paying around 60 or 70 US dollars. And it was the nicest place we've ever stayed in, in Hong Kong. Yes. But it was super tiny. Nice. The, the, what was really cool about our particular room is it had a really good shower. Yeah. But everything else was really small. Our bed was super tiny. Our desk was like almost, it was almost a bit of a joke. Like I could barely sit down on the stool. But um, yeah, this is 
this is what you're gonna pay and uh, it's usually about 40 US dollars all the way up to 200 so we were still on the lower range of that scale mm -hmm. um, I think our room was typically around $80 but we found it on a special so it had a bit of a discount yeah. but still you don't get a lot of space for that amount of money yeah I don't think you really start getting like typical small hotel space until you're spending at least probably over 100 US dollars mm -hmm. so yeah it's 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 very expensive yeah so the next one next option would be to do luxury a luxury hotel yeah how much would that be you're caught in talking hundreds of dollars yeah, well, thousands of dollars well, well over 200 probably like anywhere from two 200 to 500 six 600 us dollars yeah, depending so. on location yeah if you want to live it up you definitely can in hong kong <laughs> And then the other option would be to do an Airbnb or an yeah. apartment rental. Mm -hmm. And between the $35 and $80 range, you can usually get a room in someone's house. Mm -hmm. um, closer to the $80 range, sometimes you can get a really small room, but it's almost more like a hotel size, like mm -hmm. a tiny hotel. But then if, you're, if you bump it up to the $80 to $200 range, sometimes you can get a, a whole apartment or a studio, mm -hmm. something like that. So. That's something to consider. We didn't do that on, on our trip, but maybe in hindsight that might have been a good idea. So another place that you could consider staying in if you're traveling on a budget is the infamous Chongqing Mansion. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, 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 that place that, is scary. <laughs> that place is uh, it, it's kind of this uh, sort of rundown building. It's near the Simshachui area of uh, Kowloon and um, mm. yeah, it's also a good place to get a curry. You can get a cheap yeah, curry. Yeah, you can get some really good Indian food, yeah. but I remember a few years back we were looking at rooms in there uh, and it's like dark and damp and run down yeah. and super sketchy characters outside. Yeah, but that, that, so, that's about as cheap as you're going to get though. Yes. If, if you're looking Excellent for, backpack. if you're like an ultra hardcore backpacker, you, Beeline it to there. Yeah. But some other cool areas also on Kowloon to consider is Mong Kok. It's it's yeah. a really cool busy area. You're nearby a lot of really good night markets, lots mm -hmm. of good the restaurants. Ladies market? Yeah, yeah. And also the Temple Street Market is nearby yeah. too. And then if you want to go to Hong Kong Island, there was one time, this is before I met you, where I, I stayed at a hostel in uh, Cowsway. Cowsway Bay. Not Cowsway <laughs> Bay. Causeway Bay. <laughs> So next up, let's talk about transportation around the city. And Hong Kong is a place where you have like so many different types of transportation. You've got the ferry, you've got the subway, you have double-decker buses. Yeah. So plenty of options, that's for sure. Trams. Yeah, you've got it all. You've got it all. And the card that you're going to want to pick up to travel on all of those options is the octopus card. Mm -hmm. You can pick it up right from the airport. And I think it's called the octopus card because of what the the eight uh, eight arms eight arms are there eight modes of transportation at Hong Kong? <laughs> I, I I think so. I think that's yeah. what it is. I don't think I could list all eight of them, but <laughs> anyways, yeah, you can pick it up right at the airport, um, and then it's one of those uh, reloadable cards that you can just you know deposit some money on. It makes transportation so much more efficient mm -hmm. because there are certain modes of transportation in Hong Kong. Where if you're paying by cash or coins, you need the exact fare. Oh, you won't get anything back. They yeah. won't give you change. Right, right. So if you have if you have the octopus card, you avoid that. Mm -hmm. And it's also a really versatile card in the sense that you can use it for some museums. You can use it in certain convenience stores. Apparently, you can use it in McDonald's. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't try that there, but yeah, it's it's one of those really highly versatile transportation and travel cards. Well worth getting. So the transportation we actually ended up using the most, especially when we were pressed for time, was the MTR, which mm -hmm. is Hong Kong's metro subway system. And it's, it's, it's an awesome way to get around. It's cheap, it's efficient, it's clean. It can be extremely crowded during peak times. Oh yes. So try to avoid rush hour. <laughs> Otherwise, you are like a, a, a sardine squeezed into a can, uh -huh. literally. And there were times where it was just so full. We couldn't get yeah, on. We couldn't like get on. The, the train just yeah. left and we were waiting so for the next we one. We got to try the next one. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's what the experience is like is there. And moving on from there, so we talked a bit about the trams. Now, this is probably, in terms of like ground transportation, this is my favorite way to, to see Hong Kong. Double-decker trams? The double-decker trams. And this is on Hong Kong Island, and they're just, it's so cool. They're just such, a, it's such an iconic and like old-fashioned way of getting around the city, mm -hmm. especially if you can go up to the second level. 
And so the, the thing to note here is that you enter through the rear and your fare is paid, you pay your fare when, you, when you're actually exiting the train, mm -hmm. after your ride. So that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, definitely try to go up to the second, second level. Sometimes it can be a bit crowded on here as well. So if you see one that's really packed, maybe let that one go by and hop on the next one. And in terms of the price, there's a flat rate of, it's Hong Kong uh, $2.30 which in US dollars is about 30 cents, so it's, it's ridiculously cheap to go on here. Um, this is somewhere where you wanna pay with your octopus card or have exact change because they don't give change back on here. So another form of transportation you can consider in Hong Kong is the Peak Tram that takes you up to Victoria Peak where you get some amazing views yeah. over the city. But oh. that's actually a sightseeing attraction, so we're gonna mention that later. Yeah. And okay. let's move on to Sam's Favorite. Oh, One of his favorite modes of transportation. Absolute favorite. The ferry. Yes, the Star Ferry going from uh, Hong Kong Island to Kowloon, is, mm -hmm. yeah, crossing Victoria Harbor. It's just so so cool. Yeah, apparently, this has been in operation. Let me see here. I, I had it written down. So it's been it's been going for over 120 years. So it is it is like it is. I, I've mentioned this in the, in our city guide, like our things to do guide. I think it's the most iconic way of seeing Hong Kong. I believe it's an 11 minute ride. And if I look at my notes here, it's only like between 250 and 340 Hong Kong dollars. So you're talking like between 30 and 50 US cents to get on a ride. So it's just it's so cheap. It's such a fun way to, to experience the, the, the harbor and also the skyline in Hong Kong. It's especially cool if you get on the Star Ferry during a Symphony of Lights mm. laser show. Or at sunset, it's really yes, pretty at sunset. or at sunset. And um, you know what, it can be crowded during the rush hour, but I find like uh, during the middle of the day, it's usually usually not very crowded at all. Mm -hmm. But even if it is crowded, it's still something we recommend taking for sure. So now let's talk about free attractions in the city, and there's quite a bit that you can do for free around Hong Kong. So first up, we would recommend checking out the Symphony of Lights. And this yeah. is like a music and laser light show on the harbor and it takes place both on Hong Kong Island and Kowloon. Yeah. But I would recommend being on Kowloon looking out to Hong Kong Island because they have a really cool skyline and it just looks amazing once the lights come on and like it all starts flickering and flashing. It's really cool. So some other really cool free things to do in Hong Kong and this is really awesome because museums, at least three museums are free on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So the ones that you can go in for free on Wednesday are the Hong Kong Heritage Museum, the Hong Kong Science Museum, and the Hong Kong Museum of Art. So keep that in mind if you're going to be there, if you're going to be in Hong Kong for a whole week, maybe plan your museum day on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So for some great free views of Hong Kong, we recommend going to Central Plaza. Mm -hmm. You can go up to the 46th floor, which is called the Sky Lobby. And there was hardly anyone there when we went. Like yeah. we were, we were. What? There maybe there's one other person. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> seriously. And you get incredible views looking out over the harbor, and you can see like the other really tall buildings. You get a great view of the skyline. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Like yeah, you can actually get 360 degree yeah. views. Like you can walk around in a circle, and it's all like glass windows, floor to ceiling. And you don't have to pay. I, I can't believe it's not more popular. It's really worth visiting. Yeah, it's really underrated. I'd mm -hmm. say it's the most underrated thing we did in Hong Kong. There's mm -hmm. hardly anyone there when we visited in the morning. All right, so moving on to something else that's free. There's a lot of really cool parks you can visit in Hong Kong for free. Two of our favorites were Hong Kong Park, mm -hmm. which is a really nice park on Hong Kong Island. There's, a, there's an aviary. There's just a lot of really nice places to walk around. It's really lush, really green. It's kind of like this, this tiny little oasis escape in the middle of the city. And it's kind of in the heart of the city. And then the next one we really liked was Kowloon Park, which was on the side, of, which was in Kowloon, which is where we were staying, basically. Yeah. That's another really nice park. It's very big, very spread out. Um, highly recommend going for a walk there. So something else you can consider doing in Hong Kong is hiking. There are a lot of different hiking trails, one of the most famous being the Dragon's Back. Another place we really enjoyed visiting that was absolutely free except for getting there <laughs> was the Tian Tan Buddha and the Poland Monastery. Admission to those two places is completely free to visitors. You just have to pay to take the cable car out there. Right, or if you want to go an even cheaper route, and I did this several years ago, you can take the bus up there. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to wait in line for that, unlike the cable car. <laughs> Okay, next one that we have here is the Temple Street Night Market. So obviously if you want to eat or shop, you're going to pay some money, but if you just want to take it in, you can, uh, you can walk 
you can walk through the market for free. Um, the Noonday Gun. And this, oh. is, this is the one attraction I really wanted to do in Hong Kong. I, I don't know why I like it so much. It's a little bit quirky. Just every day at noon, they, they fire this off. It's basically near, uh, it's near Causeway Bay. Mm -hmm. And you have to go underground to get to there. You have to go through like an underground parking place. So two other places that we really enjoyed visiting were the Chilin Nunnery and the Nan Lian Gardens. And the two are located right next to each other. They have beautiful gardens with yeah. like bonsai and waterfalls yeah. and lakes. And it's just really quiet, really pleasant. They play soft music while yes. you're walking through the gardens. It's very yeah. tranquil. It's still a lovely place to go for a stroll. Yeah. And finally, so we're, we've done 10 things here. Done for <laughs> It's the Avenue of Stars, and unfortunately, this is under construction at the moment. Mm -hmm, Hopefully, by the time you visit, it will be open again. And this is where you can see like the iconic Bruce Lee uh, statue. Yeah, and it's That's basically awesome. an area along the waterfront, so you yeah. also get great views of the city from there. So we've talked about free attractions. Now we're going to tell you about some attractions that you're going to have to pay for. But these are iconic experiences in Hong Kong, so you'll most likely want to you know, dish out those bills. Yeah, most definitely. And so the thing we recommend doing the most, obviously, is taking the, the peak tram up to Victoria yes. Peak. And that is like such a steep tram, right? It's like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's like a roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. Like that. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, exactly. And in terms of the price, I have it written down here. So if you just do the peak tram only and not the observation deck, which is what we did, you can get some really good free views when you go up mm. top. It is going to cost you for a return ticket 45 Hong Kong dollars. So that's just under six US dollars. So it's actually not that expensive. It's something that we highly recommend. Although there can, it can be quite crowded lining up to get on it. Yes. So yeah, be, pre be prepared to wait a bit. And if you don't want to, if you kind of want to beat the crowds, then don't go right at night because that's probably the most popular time. Also, it's also really popular on the weekend. So mm -hmm. consider going on a weekday, maybe mid afternoon mm -hmm. before, uh, yeah, before sunset. That would be a really good time to go. So now we're going to move on to our favorite part, the food <laughs> yeah. and the eating and what should you eat? So first up, we're going to recommend a really well-known restaurant, Tim Ho Wan. They specialize in dim sum, and they're a Michelin-starred restaurant that is surprisingly affordable, and the food is amazing. Yeah, and I just have to mention, sorry for the construction noises. <laughs> they're building. It's, yeah, there's, there's some building going on, uh, but yeah, we'll just roll, <laughs> with, roll it. with it. We're gonna roll with it. But yeah, Tim Ho, Tim Ho Wan is really cool because it's affordable dim sum, Michelin star quality. And there's several locations, so definitely check it out. But also, don't uh, don't be afraid to check out your your local neighborhood dim sum place because mm -hmm. dim sum is is just awesome in Hong Kong. And we we ate at several different restaurants while we were there. Yeah, we found a little local spot that actually had discounts if you ate mid morning and mid afternoon. Yeah. So we They're were just like eating all peak hours. Off. Yeah, we got like fifteen percent off. Sometimes our bill would be like just over ten dollars for the two of us. Yeah, for at this a lot place. of income. Yeah, so it's cheap, it's affordable, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. Oh man, is it ever good? But aside from dim sum, there are other cool foods that you can try. So what else? Yeah, so in terms of other things, you can have uh, kongi, which is juke. Uh, it's kind of like a, a juke for breakfast, but you can also get it any time of day. So juke is a porridge. Yeah, juke sorry. is the Korean word. <laughs> <laughs> why is he speaking Korean? Yeah, I don't know why. <laughs> But uh, then you can also get the uh, uh, roasted pork over rice, which is also really delicious. And there's also really nice baked goods, like there's some uh, something called wife cake, and then of course the iconic Hong Kong egg tarts. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot of really good foods to try in Hong Kong. That's just a few of them. So now let's talk about a fancy meal. Yeah. Not on this last visit, but a few years ago, we went out for afternoon tea at the Peninsula <laughs> Hotel. Oh my, yeah. that was not a good day for Sam no. because they do not allow you to make reservations. Yeah. So we probably stood in line for two and a half hours and Sam was sulking and then he refused to come on <laughs> camera and make a video about it. Yeah, I, I lost my cool that day. I mean, it is, a, it is a really, really awesome thing to do, but you really need to be prepared to wait for a while. Yeah. Uh, it is the most famous place to have tea in Hong Kong and it's cool and it, I mean, it's popular for good reason. Yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful setting. Yeah. It's, it's a but, beautiful hotel and they have classical music, like there's people playing the harp and the yeah. violins. So it's fancy, but yeah. long wait times and it's expensive. Right. Like you mentioned so, the price. Yeah, I'm going to talk about the price right now. So for two people, it's six, 
We're currently at 658 Hong Kong dollars, which is roughly about 85 US dollars. So you're looking at tea. Yeah, you're looking at over $40 per person. It does come with a generous like amount of finger sandwiches and, and yummy snacks, but yeah, it is not cheap. There is an alternative, uh, there's a lot of alternative places to have uh, tea in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. And the place that we ended up going to recently was a place called the Lion Rock. So what we did is we called them up for a reservation mm -hmm. uh, that the same day that we went, which is incredible. And we arrived on time. We were we were like we were able to sit down right away, and within minutes we were served our tea and tea. and we had a really we had an amazing uh, set of sweets and uh, savory foods as well. Mm -hmm. And that one was quite a bit cheaper. I have the price here: four hundred and twenty-eight Hong Kong dollars for two people. Oh, ready? Yeah. And we are back. Yeah. We came knocking to clean our room, so we've actually been gone a few hours. We yeah. had lunch, lunch, we met up with friends. We had a little siesta, we met up with friends, and the now we're finally back. Changed. Yeah. So we're not, we're not gonna pretend we're just rolling uh, seamlessly. Anyways, we were talking about tea. The price. The price. Afternoon tea. Right. So the price of afternoon tea we were talking about at the Lion Rock. And mm. yeah. And that is <laughs> 428 Hong Kong dollars for two people and that's basically 54 US dollars so about 27 28 dollars per person yeah it's cheaper a lot more affordable than the yeah. peninsula we can tell you that yeah the advantages are it's cheaper it's more affordable and you can make a reservation arrive and have it exactly at the time you booked mm -hmm. so that's really nice so next up we're going to talk about things we loved about Hong Kong yeah and there's quite a bit that we loved about Hong mm -hmm. Kong so the first being all of the free attractions and we've already listed 10 of those so we won't ramble on about that but Hong Kong is just a city where almost most of the things that we ended up doing ended up being free. Yeah, and it kind of balances out nicely because accommodation is going to eat up a big chunk of your yeah. budget, but then you can go sightseeing and not necessarily have to spend a lot of money. Yeah, you can literally plan the whole day just around free activities. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, Next up. second dim sum. And I, dim I, I wrote in my notes, dim sum is amazing. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't know what else to say beyond that. It's just such such tasty food. It's cheap and it's just it's all over Hong Kong. And you know what? With dim sum, you can eat it any time of day. Right. We were having this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and yeah. sometimes like a mid-afternoon sure. snack. Let's get dim sum. Yeah, exactly. It's it's such a versatile meal. You can have it have yeah. it for lunch. You can have it as a snack. Exactly. And we ate it a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay, number three most diverse and interesting options of transportation in any city we've visited like i can't think of any other city where you can take a ferry where you can take a tram where you can take the metro where you can be in a cable car where you can take a steep peak tram going up it's just like options galore and everything is really efficient everything is cheap and affordable and that's what's awesome about Hong Kong is it's so easy to get around and there's so many different options you can choose from. My suggestion would be to try them all, especially the tram and the Star Ferry. Mm -hmm. Another thing we loved about Hong Kong is the views. Like I think this is a city that has such an iconic skyline, yeah. especially at night when the lights come on. It's really amazing. Yeah, it's cool. And if you if you keep revisiting the city, it's always changing. There's always a new always big building. New skyscrapers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's amazing by day and also by night. So, yeah. and from different vantage points, it's really cool from Victoria Peak. It's great on Kowloon, where you can see like the laser the Symphony of Light show. Like there's just so many different cool vantage points where you can see the skyline. And like we mentioned, it's totally iconic. So number five, Hong Kong is a dynamic city and there are not too many comparisons. Like it, it is just an assault on the senses. Exactly. <laughs> and there's just so, so many people, there's so much, going on in terms of transportation. Yes. It's it's just a very exciting city. You can feel the pulse of the city almost anywhere, all the time, any time of day. But you know what? That can be a good and a bad thing. So now this is gonna be our transition into things we didn't necessarily love about Hong Kong. Yeah. And there were a few. There were a few. So I would say number one for me is the crowds. There are certain areas in the city or certain times of day where it can feel yeah. quite claustrophobic. Yeah. And we've also been in Hong Kong before during holidays and festivals oh. or like celebrations. But yeah, and, we, were, we were in Mong Kok and like there were times where we would look at our apartment window and be like, we're not gonna even bother going out. Yeah. It just looked like like 
uh, you know, ants scurrying across the street yeah. at night. And as an example, I remember a few years ago, we decided we wanted to go to the movies on a Friday or a Saturday night. It was probably like 6 or 7 p.m. So we thought, oh, we'll just walk over to the movie theater and buy a ticket. And we got there and everything was everything. sold out for the, whole, for the day. For the whole day, for the whole so night. So it's Not a that. place where there are so many people that sometimes you need to actually like make reservations yes. and bookings in advance if there's something that you really want to do. Yeah, exactly. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Uh, yeah. You can get swept up by the excitement of the city, mm -hmm. but it also can be overwhelming, especially when you're yeah. feeling a little run down, you're a little tired, maybe a little sick. All the crowds can be really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next thing is, uh, I'll just be perfectly blunt, is some of the worst value accommodation <laughs> you'll find in Asia <laughs> for, for what you spend. Like you're just getting very like cramped tight quarters and unless you're willing to splurge. Mm -hmm. And Hong Kong might be the city that if you've been, if, if you have the resources to splurge, it might be worth it. Yeah. Because uh, you really pay for what you, <laughs> you really pay for what you get. <laughs> And at our price range that we paid, and it's a quite a bit higher than what we pay in a lot of other cities yeah. in Asia. We had paper thin walls. We could, I mean, we, we could touch our, literally babies touch crying, our walls. Babies yeah, we did. We didn't have one. fighting. We didn't have one good sleep to be honest, because there's babies crying at night, and then there's construction during the day. Yeah. So that was a it weared on us over time. Mm -hmm. uh, the accommodations. And the, the last thing is that uh, nightlife and fine dining can get a little bit pricey. Mm -hmm. um, as, and it's just, you would expect that in a big developed city like Hong Kong. So, but I just found like if you're going out for drinks, it, it, it is going to be pricey. It's a lot cheaper to get your drinks from a convenience store and have them at home. But yeah, I would still experience a nightlife though, one, yeah. at least once. But. I think it's a city that you have to experience at least once in your lifetime. Like it's truly impressive. It's amazing. And it's yeah. just so iconic. So I would say go to Hong Kong, but maybe save up your cash so you yeah. can actually, you know, have fun, stay in the types of hotels you want to maybe yeah. splurge on a few experiences and really enjoy it. And if you're someone that doesn't have enough money for like a more expensive accommodations, then just plan to be out most of the day. Don't, yeah. you don't want to spend a lot of time in your room if, 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 if it's that small. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, we recommend going to Hong Kong. We loved it. We've been there many times and we will probably be back in the future. So those are our tips for Hong Kong. We hope you found some of this information helpful. If there's anything else you'd want to know about the city, maybe leave us a question in the comments below and we'll try to answer that. Exactly. If not, if you're a local, feel free to answer yes, please, please in the comments. Because Tell yes, we, we, are, we are just visitors and the local perspective is always better. Yeah. So yeah, signing off and do visit Hong Kong if you get the chance. See you later. Ciao.